Good morning. Today we are going to talk to Dr. Jalen Kit, a lecturer and a researcher in the Department of Geology. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? How did I become a researcher? Um, I think I got introduced to research um, when I did my honours. So part of our program was for us to do a, well, back then it was an option to do a research project. So um, I did my research project with my new supervisor and I think that platform or that exposure basically got me interested um, in doing research. So that's how it started with my, my honours. Okay. I think prior to honours I didn't actually have an idea of what research was but that gave me an introduction and after that I was basically to do research. Thank you. And then, Doctor, what are you currently working on? Okay, um, my current current work or focus is basically on isotope geology. So, or, or um, isotope geochemistry is when I look at uh, the isotopes of um, a specific deposit. In my case, it's the flat reef. So, we are looking at um, the isotope history of, or the isotope signature, sorry, of the flat reef, trying to understand how it relates to the rest of the push valve complex. Okay, thank you. And then coming to the Bushveld complex, okay, yeah. <laughs> what is the structure of the Bushveld complex? Okay, so the Bushveld complex is basically um, the largest layered intrusion that we know of, right? So um, you can think of it as comp comp being composed of um, many layers, right? And um, the specific layer that we are interested in is the Rustenburg layered suite. Okay, so this Rustenburg layers, which you can think of the layers, right? So when it when this magma came in, um, it basically uh, intruded as different layers. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details. I just want to uh, uh, mention this pride and joy of the Bushwell complex for, for us is this Rustenburg layers suite because this Rustenburg layers suite um, is basically the suite that 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 um, it. Um, it has the, the ore horizons that we are currently mining in South Africa. So it has the Mariensky Reef, it has the um, UG2, and then the Platt Reef. So I, I, I don't have any uh, illustration here, but I hope I'm making sense. So basically, yeah. this magma intruded, intruded as layers, and the, the layer of importance for us as geologists would be the Rastenburg layer suite because that's where we have the chromium, the PGEs and all that that we are currently mining in South Africa. So that is the, 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 the apple of our eye, that layer over there. Okay. Yes, Doctor, can you explain to us what is isotope uh, stratigraphy? Oh, as the, as the stratigraphy or geochemistry. Yes. Um, I like to use the analogy uh, um, usually to our students is that you can think of any deposit or, or uh, um, any layered, uh, layered rocks of a layer of rocks, sorry, as um, a layered cake. So when we look at geochemistry, when we look at the isotopes, what we're trying to do is basically look at the ingredients that gave rise to this layered cake. And by looking at the ingredients of these rocks, we actually also can determine the recipe as to how they came about. That's the analogy to, to, to explain <laughs> looking at the geochemistry. Okay, thank you so the much. Rocks. And then, are there any exciting gaps in your field? Um, well, totally yes, because what we found was um, historically now, the, the my focus area, the northern limb of the Bushwa complex. Um, in the past, since the discovery of platinum in South Africa, the focus was usually on the western and the eastern limb of this complex, right? Um, with not a lot of work done in the northern limb. So um, with this recent recent drilling programs or campaigns that they had in that limb, um, we had to, well, basically they discovered the flat reef. Okay, so the discovery of this flat reef now allows us to look at um, a less contaminated uh, um, ore horizon because I'm not sure, sure how familiar you, <laughs> you are with the Bushwell complex, but um, in the northern limb, so uh, south of Mukopane, 
okay. yeah, in Lubobo. Basically, that's where the discovery of the flat reef was. Now, in the past, it was, diff it was difficult to correlate what we find in terms of the ore horizons in the north with what we find in Rustenburg. The Rastenburg area, the area, the western and the eastern limbs. Um, but the discovery with this new ore horizon, we can actually now look at its true chemistry, look at its isotopes, and see how it relates to the remainder of the um, bushwhack complex as a whole. And by doing that, we can actually um, we, we better our understanding um, with regards to the processes that gave rise to those horizons formed. Thank you so much. Yes. And then what? A role can technology play in the field of geology? In the field of geology specifically, well, I'm excited um, by uh, technological advancements in the sense of um, analytical instruments that we now okay. are able to use. I think that there are a lot of analyses that wasn't possible in the past because we have some limitations with regards to um, the uh, technological instruments that we can use. However, now, um, with this advanced for advanced technology, we are, for example, um, able to look at a, a large piece of rock or drill core um, in situ, and we are able to determine or look at the different types of mineralization that we have in that um, slab of rock. Whereas in the past, you first had to do a lot of um, um, sample preparations. You had to cut this, the rock. You had to um, make a certain thin section or a little slab of rock. Then you had to do, um, for example, microscopy and all that. So there's a lot of uh, steps, basically, that you had to take to understand the mineralogy of a specific rock. But how, with, with the advanced technology, we are now able to actually look at a slab of rock um, in situ, see the different types of mineralization which actually makes it, um, we, we do a, 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 a uh, how can I put it, a more rapid investigation of a rock, which wasn't um, possible in the past. So with all these advancements, it, 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 it makes our lives a bit easier, but it also gives us um, uh, detailed information. It wasn't possible prior to what it, the, the new techniques that we have currently. So Thanks. that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then, Dr. Watt? A role or what is the importance of geochemistry in geology? Uh, geochemistry in geology. I think um, if I just think of, uh, for example, environmental geochemistry, yes. I think um, there are a lot of uh, um, environmental geochemists, for example, they are doing um, um, a lot of work that has impact on our mining industry uh, in terms of for example, the risk assessments that they are doing now uh, to ensure that the, mine, the uh, current mining operations basically doesn't uh, um, pollute or, or interfere, not interfere per se, but um, <laughs> it's not over. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, so if you look at environmental geochemists, for example, they basically are in charge or responsible for doing um, the various risk assessments. So we know that that is important for our mining operations to ensure that we do not um, pollute our environment. We like to uh, rehabilitate the area that we have mined in, to ensure that it is either in the same condition that we found it or even in a better condition. So the geochemist, geochemistry is important for us so that we can actually um, check what um, if we have any of our pollutants, for example, in our um, water sources yes. or water streams. And also in terms of um, research for different ore, ore deposit types, when we look at the geochemistry, it gives, gives us an idea as to um, not only what the rocks comprise of, but it also um, allows us to investigate as um, the processes that were involved to give rise to these specific rocks. So geochemistry, I feel, um, they are essential traces, for example, to uh, essential traces, traces to give us a, a better understanding as to how or what the conditions were for that specific magmas that gave rise to the deposits that we are looking at. Yes. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then what message can you give to aspiring researchers? Um, to aspiring researchers, um, I would say, um, firstly, to go for it. I know um, in, in today's time, when I speak to young, young people, it always comes down to, you know, can we make money? <laughs> 
<laughs> what does the money look like? But I found from, from conversations I had with um, young professionals, some are in um, certain industry uh, roles or positions whereby they are not very much happy or, or fulfilled. So my advice for young people would be that if you have a passion to do research, you should do it. Understand? There are a lot of questions that are unanswered. And um, I, I feel that there's value in research because we contribute to the pool of knowledge yes. that we have regarding various issues. And I'm not just referring to geology specifically, but all the other fields. You understand? Um, researchers contribute to our understanding of certain principles or certain um, um, concepts or certain issues that we are faced with in our society today. So my advice for, youngster, for, for young aspiring researchers would be that if you have the passion for it, do it. We live in a time when we, we have so many opportunities that wasn't there in the past. You understand? Um, just recently I returned from a conference. When I was younger, I'm still young, but when I was younger, I never thought that, you know, I would have the opportunity to travel. You, 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 you get to, you get exposure to like-minded people. You understand? We, we, we have, um, um, discussions, collaborative work that we do with researchers from across the world. And that wasn't possible, well, that doesn't feel possible as when you are a young aspiring researcher or, no, or even before research, just, um, deciding to study, for example. And I think that it's, it's opportunity that we need to grab. Um, this wasn't possible in the past. This wasn't something that you would dream about in the past. It felt, it felt far-fetched, but I think that with, even with technology now that we have, you understand, there are so, so much opportunities for us as young, no, 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 I guess I'll refer to myself as a young researcher, but you understand, we, we, we have those platforms available to us now. So if the passion is there to do it, let's not focus on other things, but do what we love. Thank you so much. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? Um, apart from research, well, I enjoy food. <laughs> um, I love traveling, and I'm also very involved with church. So my focus is on uh, our Sunday school and dance ministry. That's what I'm passionate about, productions and so forth. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then we now learn that you are not only the researcher but you are also plowing back to the community yes. thank you so much and then we really appreciate your time thank you so much for having me thanks okay.